Welcome to Trading Secrets, education and small business mixed with a bit of zesty Brazilian sauce. Here's your host, Roger. Hello, everyone. Hope all is well. This is Roger, and this is episode number three called Details Matter. As I said in a previous show, I live in a condo in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, which happens to be on the northeast region of the country, very cold on the winters. And my condo is 30 years old, and my HVAC system is the original system when the house was built. So one Sunday morning, maybe three or four weeks ago, I wake up, I wake up really early, like six o'clock on a Sunday to do my things. And then I realized the house was really cold. So I went to the thermostat. The thermostat was 72 and running and the house was still very chilly. So I went down to the basement and I realized the system was running, but the flame that kicks in that should heat the air, it wasn't. So I turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. A few times, this took about an hour or so. And eventually the flame came back on and the house start, uh, started running warmer. So thank God. And I couldn't figure out what it was. So I said, maybe it was just a hiccup. So three or four days later, the same thing happened. And then I did the same thing again, off and on, off and on, off and on. But then I call a company. It was a friend of mine. He never called back. Then I waited a couple of days, so maybe the guy was busy. Called a second time, never called back. That's why it's one of the reasons I don't really like to do business with friends and family for that reason. I like to treat business as business, but that's just me. Anyway, I was asking someone if they knew any HVAC company reliable that I could call. And they mentioned one near my region. People have been in business for almost a century, family owned and all that. So I called them up, very responsive. They sent someone right away. I wasn't home, so the guy dealt with my wife, and he basically said, well, your system is very old, and we can fix it, or we can replace it. We can fix it, and you're probably going to have a system running for maybe another year or two, but it's old. So some of the parts not even exist anymore, so you need to get uh, parts from the second market and all the good stuff. And we also could put you a very new system, high efficiency and all that jazz. So my wife gave me all this information and I said, well, I just want to have a conversation with this guy. So I called the company back and asked them to send the guy back here. But then the guy that originally came, he was a technician. So they sent a guy, a sales guy on a Saturday so we could dealt with. Guy came, well-prepared got booties, put booties on his shoes, came to the house, laptop, went down to the basement, explained everything, showed me what we could be done in the new system. He gave me the whole options. I was basically sold on a new system already because it's high efficiency. I would have paid less money for my utility bills. Also has a, a state program that I could pay with zero interest over seven or eight years. So I was basically sold. The process was very smooth. I got approved right away. We scheduled the installation to replace the entire system maybe three, two weeks later. So on the day that the people came to do the job, I was home. So three guys showed up on time put booties on their feet, laid out tarp to protect all the floor and all the tracking. It was the day after a snowstorm, so you can imagine all the mess that they would have bring it into the house. But they create a path from the basement all the way to the door. So great job, no problem. They were here for 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Got the job done. I was pretty happy. And then... Three days later, we spent a lot of time in the basement. We got TV here, and it's not carpet, but kind of ceiling tiles, the same ceiling tiles you have in the gym. 
So we have that. I have my chair massage down here. So we spend a lot of time here. So my wife told me, so I guess there's a leaking in one of the pipings. So I check it out. I saw a leaking dripping right on one of the carpet pieces. So the next morning, I called the company. And right away, the girl in charge said, no problem. We'll send someone there to check it out. And they scheduled for a day that uh, I was going to be home again. They gave me a window between 7 and 9. So by 8.30, nobody showed up. And I understand they gave me 7 to 9. But the first time they came here, she gave me the same two-hour window. And they showed up with 10 minutes of 7 o'clock. So I was kind of spoiled already in expecting this guy to be near the 7 o'clock mark. Anyway, oh, no, they're on their way. They'll be there. I waited, so 9 o'clock, 9.15, 9.20, 9.30. And then I had my day already planned. I was going to leave these people here. I'm going to go out, do some errands, and come back. So they already changed my mood because nobody called to tell me they're going running late or anything like that. So this is one of the things I really don't like on the customer service industry. People don't really keep the client on the loop. Anyway, I call on my appointment telling her that I was going to be late. I had to wait until these people showed up in the house. They understood. So I waited until this guy came, a younger guy, probably his early 20s, with his helper. Didn't put booties on, just wanted to see what was the problem. Came tracking snow to the house. I don't say anything. I was just thinking out loud. And I say, oh, my God, I was so spoiled by the first crew that was here. So he came, went to the basement, checked things out and said, well, I don't know if I have all the parts here. And we're talking about the same company. It's not a sub that they send it out. It was the same company, same employees, just different people. So the guy, well, I don't know if I have all the parts, but I will go back to my truck, see what I have. If I don't have, I'll call someone to bring the parts over. We'll get it done. And I'll say, that's okay. So I left, did what I have to do, came back, and I said, well, you guys don't have any tarps or anything? Oh, no, I'll see if I have one in my van, in my truck. But they didn't. So they tracked this snow and salt and sand all day almost fixing this leaking because they had to cut a piece of the pipe and bring it back and put a new piece and glue it. So they were in and out of the house for a good chunk of maybe six or seven hours doing all of these procedure. So in the end, I was just upstairs, did my errands, went upstairs, do my work in, the, in my office. And it's all, we all set. So I go down. I see all this mess. They tried to fix as best as they could, but really, totally not up to my standards. Say, oh, okay, that's okay. Is the licking fixed? Yeah, the licking's fixed. So I say, okay, thank you very much. See you later. So my point is this. Maybe you have multiple people in your organization. Maybe it's just yourself. But if you have multiple people that go to people's home, you should train everyone because some of your staff may do a phenomenal job, but maybe some of your staff don't. So make sure you go out with everyone. Make sure everyone is on the same page according to your company standards. Maybe you do a follow-up call with your client after the job is done to make sure everyone resonates the same message. I wrote a article recently explaining a few things that installers should do when they go into the house. And if you are a workroom and you do your own installs, consider yourself as an installer as well. So basically, we deal with people with extra income, people that buy products from us because they want to deal 
with us, not because they need to work with us. So here's what I do. If I'm running late, I call the client in telling them that I'm going to be late by 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour. It's up to them to tell me if it will be okay to show up late or not. Sometimes they took the day off, it will be no problem. Sometimes they have other things to do, and if my schedule is messed up, it will mess up their schedule. So respect the client and make sure you call ahead if you're running late. And that happens if you're in the middle of the install, and something else happened and you cannot control, and you're bumping your next installation later, make sure you call ahead. The more notice you give to your client, the better, the less upset you're going to make the client. So as I knock on the door, I put my booties on. And I understand some people don't like to wear booties. They don't feel comfortable. They feel slippery. So bring an indoor shoes if you're not comfortable working with booties. But show respect. These people pay big money for new floorings. They treat their homes as their temples. So treat with respect. So show that you care. So booties, first thing. Then I bring tarps. I bring the moving blankets because they are thicker. And if I'm going to carry tools and boxes, I want to lay those over the tarps. I look for a space in the house. I ask Mrs. Jones, is that an area that I can work on? And she point me out to a, to a area. And then I put my tarps over there. If I carry a lot of boxes, of letters and that kind of stuff, and I need more than one, I have two or three or four in a van. I'll just put them together. Also, I never put tools on people's furniture. This is a no, no, no. Absolutely no. So I've seen it before. Put on the bed, on the nightstand, on the table. Just don't do it. It's not respectful. As careful as you are, people don't see that with the good eyes. And if you are going to bring a big ladder inside the house, extension ladder, make sure you have bumpers, those foams that go on top of the ladder. I even put some booties on top of the foam so they don't leave any prints on the walls. Again, the whole point here is to show respect to people's home. When you're done, You take all your tools, you take all your boxes, you make sure you bring a small portable vacuum, vacuum everything around, even if it's not perfect, but show respect. And that's basically my message for today. I am going to leave some links here for my blog and also for the company that I buy my booties from. They offer regular booties, they have waterproof booties, They have different colors, so it's a great company. I'm not making any money off of this. I'm just suggesting the company is called Shoe Bees. Your feedback is always appreciated. If you have any suggestions, comments, I'll be more than happy to consider. As always, thank you so much for your support. And never forget, keep living your dream. Until next time. Thanks for listening to today's show. Please send us your comments and suggestions to improve your overall experience. Also, make sure to subscribe to our Trading Secrets newsletter via www.tradingupconsulting.com and tell your friends either by word of mouth or via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time.